in this bag is a secret ingredient that can fight weeds and improve soil dramatically. And it does its magic while I sit inside, watch the snowfall, and listen to holiday music. Join me as I share the secrets of green manure. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott. And when I was a new gardener, if someone would refer to green manure, I thought they were talking about that fresh stuff that you might step in if walking across a pasture that had horses or cows grazing in it. But that's not it at all. It actually took me a while to understand that green manure was just a term that gardeners use for plants that can benefit the soil and the garden dramatically. And in these bags, I don't actually have manure, but the seeds to grow those plants. So if they're just plants, why do we call it green manure? Well, I think it's because of the concept of gardeners and manure and how we use those two things together. If you have access to manure, typically you are using it in the compost pile or you're turning it into your soil to add organic material. Well, we're doing the same thing with plants. We're adding them to the compost pile and turning them in to the soil to add organic material. Because they're plants and usually alive at the time, it's been called green manure for a long time. While any plant could be put into the compost pile or turned into the soil, there are some plants that are better than others. And that's where the secrets come in. The secrets to choosing the right plants for the right purpose in using green manure. I break the benefits of green manure down into four basic categories. The first is that a green manure can greatly improve soil. The second is that green manure can suppress weeds. The third is that green manure can greatly reduce soil erosion. And the fourth is that green manures can improve the biodiversity within a garden. And in this bag is some of that magic. So what's in this bag that I've been holding since the beginning of the video? Well, it's hairy vetch seed. And hairy vetch may be a plant that you're not familiar with, but it's one of my favorites. It's a legume. And at the end of summer, I plant these seeds. The plants grow, they survive through the winter, they pop up early in the spring, and they really give my garden a head start moving into the next season. This plant, hairy vetch, fulfills all four of those benefits of a green manure. I love this plant. And there's a lot of other plants that fulfill those benefits as well. You can grow green manure plants any time of year, but I tend to think that a late summer sowing is really best to get the most benefits. And it all comes down to what plants you're growing and the benefits they provide. So let's talk about that now. Now there's basically two different types of green manure plant. There are those that are winter hardy, like the vetch, where they won't die if the temperatures get too cold. And there are those that will be killed by the winter cold. Depending on what you're using the green manure for will determine which plants you use and which category they fall into. There are two other categories we can use to characterize green manure plants, and that's legumes and non-legumes. Now, a legume is a plant that takes nitrogen out of the air and fixes it to little nodules on the roots. And when used properly, 
it introduces that nitrogen into the soil, which is beneficial for most plants. For that first benefit of improving the soil, legumes are an obvious choice. But some legumes work better than others as a green manure. It's plants like Austrian winter peas, and bell beans, and fava beans, and clover, which is amazing, and of course, the hairy vetch. And what you want to do is before the plants flower, you turn them into your soil. Now, some of the plants, like the winter peas, the clover, and the vetch, can handle a winter. So you're usually turning those plants into your soil while they're still green in the spring. The beans probably won't survive most winters. You can wait into the spring and then turn them into the soil once they're dead, or in late fall, turn them into the soil so that they can start decomposing and improving it through the winter. If you practice no-till gardening, you can still get those benefits. Instead of turning the plants into the soil, just chop them off and let them fall on the surface, or add them to your compost pile. As a mulch, they'll break down and add those nutrients to the soil. As part of compost, they're a nitrogen-rich source that can improve the entire compost before you add it to your garden. There are many non-legumes that also are great for improving the soil. Plants like oilseed radish and mustard and alfalfa have very deep roots that can help break apart dense soil. If you've got a clay soil, well, those same roots create pockets within the clay to help improve the overall tilth of the soil. There are grasses like oats, barley, annual rye grass, and winter rye that also achieve some of that same effect with their roots. In fact, that's what this bag is. It's winter rye, and I'm planning on sowing it throughout the sections of my garden that I don't have plants in yet to help break apart that soil and give me some of the other benefits. I plan on growing plants in this entire section of my garden, but that's going to happen next year. I already cleared off the surface of most of the grasses and the weeds that were growing here, but there are other plants that are starting to pop up. And right now, for me, they're weeds. I need to get rid of them. And that's where we get to the second benefit of green manures. It's with plants like the winter rye. If I just let this area stay fallow with nothing that I'm growing here, these weeds are going to take over. But if I put this winter rye seed in, the rye plants will start growing. And hopefully they'll shade out all the weeds that are here. Now first, I'll remove these weeds before I sow these seeds. But they will be growing into the winter and then again in the spring. They're a little bit allopathic. They're going to hinder some of that other weed growth while they're growing. And in the process, the roots will help break up the soil. So come springtime, I'm just going to mow these plants down, use it as a mulch, so that when I start growing the other plants that I want in this place, this wonderful green manure will have given me a head start by cutting down on all of those weeds and improving the soil in the process. Most of the green manure plants will achieve that same effect. Anytime you have a plant growing that you're maintaining, it's going to cut out the opportunity for weeds to grow. And you need to treat the green manures like you would any other garden plant. You need to get the soil ready for the seeds. You need to water the seeds until they germinate. And you need to take care of them so that they continue to grow. The difference is that the selective green manure plants can then handle the weather as you proceed through the winter. Unless it's a winter kill type of plant, and typically those are very fast growing. 
so that you put them in the ground in late summer, they grow very quickly. And then you'll cut them down or turn them into soil before the winter comes. Regardless, treat them like you would any other garden plant to keep them alive. The third benefit of reducing soil erosion follows that same idea of limiting weeds. If you have a plant growing in a spot that would normally be bare, well then it's going to reduce erosion just like it's going to cut down on the weeds. And you may have heard green manures referred to as cover crops. That's often used in the United States to refer to a green manure. And the idea is that the plant is covering what would be a bare patch of soil. Some plants work better to reduce erosion. Plants like clover and that vetch, which is a low-lying plant that spreads on the ground. Just put something in place to keep the snow and the rain from washing away all of your garden soil. And the green manures are perfect for that. You don't have to wait until the ground is absolutely bare after you've pulled out all of your summer plants before sowing the green manure seeds. What I do and what I recommend is actually start the seeds while the other plants are growing. Intersperse them with the other plants so that when you harvest the plants or pull them out because they're done for the summer, now the green manure seeds and seedlings and young plants are already in place to start covering that bare patch. That's what I've done in my bed where I sowed beets and carrots and peas recently. In between the young seedlings that are just starting to pop up, I'm putting in my vetch seeds in those raised beds. When I harvest the beets and the carrots and the peas, the vetch plants will already be growing and carry me through the winter to cover what would normally have been a bare bed. The fourth benefit of using green manures, improving the biodiversity within your garden, is another great advantage. Whenever you're working these plants into the soil or using the compost or mulch on your soil, you're giving food for all those microorganisms that help to make soil better. And they're a great starter food for a lot of other insects and organisms. Also, they attract a lot of beneficial insects. Beneficial insects need a place to survive the winter, a place to lay their eggs or to burrow underneath and be protected. The green manure plants offer that in abundance. And plants like the vetch that I love so much is among the first to flower in the spring. Now to get the best nitrogen fixing benefit of the legumes, you work it into the soil before it flowers. But I always let some of my vetch flower because the bees love that plant. And it's one of the first flowers to attract bees. It also attracts ladybugs. So when I have those young seedlings growing in spring that are susceptible to aphid damage, well, the ladybugs are already on the vetch plants, ready to devour the aphids, among many other insects. The green manures, grow them, if nothing else, than to attract those good insects to your garden and those beneficial microorganisms for your soil. There are a few factors to be aware of when you grow green manures. When you turn them into the soil in the spring, they will lock up some of that soil nitrogen for a brief period. So plan for about three or four weeks from the time that you work them into the soil until the time that you sow seeds or transplant what you want to grow in that particular section, just so they have time to start breaking down within the soil. Also, rabbits and deer will eat some of the green manure. So you might need to be a little selective in choosing which ones you choose to grow if it's an area where deer or rabbits might be eating. The seeds that I got 
are from high mowing organic seeds. And I bought five pounds of the winter rye and one pound of the vetch. They have a great selection, their prices are good, and I didn't have to pay for shipping when I bought these seeds. I'll also put a link below to some Amazon options for green manure seeds. There's a lot of blends available, so you don't have to be so selective with individual choices. You can get a blend of the seeds that you want. If you have any questions about green manures, cover crops, and how to grow them in your garden, well then just let me know. And any other comments are certainly welcome. If you'd like to see more of these gardening videos, well then subscribe to the Gardener Scott channel. And be sure to click on the bell and accept the notifications when new videos come out. If you like this video, well then you can give me a thumbs up and share it. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.